there and play some freaking flesh and blood. I am pumped over the moon to see my buddy. Look, I got to be honest. I, I, I'm going to avoid being a homer as much as I can. But I got to pull for Craig. I've known him for years. I know how hard he works at this game. I know how much he's really deserving of being our national champion. Just saying, not to say that Fino doesn't deserve it just as much, but it is very, very inspiring to see Craig make it to this point. And I may tease him a bit for being old, <laughs> but being old means it comes with responsibilities, a lot of things he has to do, and is still able to go ahead and navigate to this point. A really impressive achievement from Craig Kremples. Absolutely. Craig Kremples, the fifth seed here in the top eight, taking on Fino Black, your fourth seed. This is going to be Dromai versus Lexi, two players with a storied tournament history, but it's all come down to this. If you want to be the national champion, if you want to etch your name into flesh and blood's lore, you have to make it through this gauntlet. We're going to start off with a Tunic activation from Craig Kremples, and it's time to activate the very first Voltaire of the top eight. What's going to go into the arsenal? Are we going to see any arrows fire here, or is this just going to be a setup turn for Mr. Kremples? Really interesting part of Craig's history. Uh, formal, former national champion in another TCG back before Sam was born, actually. <laughs> okay. So okay. <laughs> just absolutely longtime veteran, knows what he's doing here, ready to battle. Going to go ahead and load him. It looks to be a sedation shot, so that's going to be the one that threatens the inertia token on hit. Something I want to highlight, we're taking a look at these equipment suites as we often do to start this game. Craig going ahead and rocking the Cracker Jacks. We mentioned that he doesn't have the Hornet Sting available to him. Valuing the ability of the Cracker Jacks to turn on a Bolton shot that's stuck in your arsenal to make sure that you can continue the turn because we don't have the Trench available to us registering the Tunic in this matchup. Been very interesting to see the evolution of that arm slot post Bullseye Bracers, man. Mm -hmm. We've seen Cracker Jacks. We've seen Shock Charmers. We've seen Hornet Sting. All kinds of options. And I just love seeing the diversity out of the slot. Uh, you know, different tools for different matchups. And look, this is, however, another weakness in Craig's list. A admittedly a bit underprepared for the Dromai matchup. Something like Hornet Sting makes a big deal in this matchup. Yeah, the Hornet Sting. So when you block with it, if you reveal an arrow on the top, you can deal one damage to an attacking hero or critically an ally. So if an Aether Ashwing is attacking and that one damage pings off the Aether Ashwing before the go again resolves, that's the end of the turn there. So a massive way that Lexis have found to take down the Dromais. This is going to be the end of the turn after after the second arsenal for Craig here. Fino on his on that first turn zero went ahead and activated the Seeker's leggings. Yes, we opted one, we prevented a damage, but most critically, we started our ash train. One ash there for Fino. Yeah, and it's really interesting how Craig played that turn. No damage was actually done. Once Craig presented the arrow in Arsenal, Fino went ahead and activated. And Craig just sat back at that point and said, okay, well, I'm ready to play a six-card hand on the next go-around. And interesting shift already in the matchup. That Ash generation is going to be so, so critical for Fino Black. Has to get that train rolling. That is one of the ways Dromai can stumble. If Fino is not able to produce Ash early on, things can slow down and allow Lexi to start doing those not only huge damage output turns, but disruptive turns where it will be hard for Fino to actually go ahead and make some headway in this matchup. Is Fino going to find any dragons to develop early? What kind of pressure will he be able to put on? We can see an Invoke Asvali in the hand that will consume the only Ash, but will also turn on the Flamescale Furnace, a good way to grab Ash at instant speed. Also want to highlight the Wave of Reality in the Arm Slot, talking about Arm Slots in these heroes. That Wave of Reality with the Ward 1 and then the Spectral Shield generation on the back end, a really critical way for Illusionists to get over two initial breakpoints from a Ranger hero. They come in at four, and they come in at five. Use the Wave of Reality and the Spectral Shield to use a three block for a four or a D-React for a five early. That can make a lot of difference in terms of tempo. It's been really nice to see this card come to prominence in the Drill My List. It is extremely powerful. It, it, it seems kind of uh, middling at first look, mm -hmm. I think. It, it's not. It's an extremely, extremely powerful piece of equipment doing exactly what you detailed, Sam. It, it's so good at just uh, doing your setup turns and protecting you in those critical moments. First dragon out there in the arena. It is Asvali, as you mentioned, and this is going to immediately ask Craig for some answers. You're going to want to clean this up. First thing, though, a little bit of damage headed Craig's way, and first shot goes to Fino Black. Craig falling down to that below 40 life total for the first time in this matchup. First blood of the top eight here. The Asvali coming in for that point of arcane damage and the two physical. So now we can see this is a really already a, a, a junction for Fino. He's got that Sigil of Solace that represents three life, but he also has the Billowing Mirage, which represents not only an Ash, but also an Aether Ashwing if he wishes. That Ravenous Rabble as well, representing some damage, but also a beautiful starter in your arsenal, a way to begin the turn when you already have dragons. Also, 
that Sigil of Solace could be three life if you wish it. So this is exactly why these players have gotten here. They are the best in the nation, and they know how to answer these questions. The answer for Fino, we're going to pitch that Ravenous Rabble to come in with the Billowing Mirage. Let's make an Ash, and it looks like leave it there. Save ourselves some Ash for the rest of the game. Yeah, I think the Ash generation pretty critical here. It is just a blue Billowing Mirage, I believe, so the damage output not there, but you have to have that Ash going into subsequent turns. And you also want your starter. And you mentioned Ravenous Rabble able to play that role, but Sigil of Solace also able to do the same. Mm -hmm. I, I think you kind of want to prioritize keeping the Sigil of Solace around because this matchup apt to move an accelerated pace. Therefore, you need to gain life early on. Go ahead and buy yourself perhaps an extra turn. Sigil of Solace in your arsenal is a great way to do so. Craig is able to clean up that Asvali as the first step on this turn. Yeah, really nice there to have the Falcon Wing set up in the arsenal. You don't really have to spend more resources. Just the Falcon Wing going to already have the go again. Clean up the Asvali. This is an Ice Quake, a card that we've seen come out of favor a little bit in these Lexi lists, but we're going to pump up the Bolton Shot, give it the additional go again, which is critical, the additional power, which is also critical. But now, for the rest of the turn, any card that hits is going to create a frostbite. And as you said, in decks without a lot of blues, that can get a little hairy. Sam, I think this is the actual best card against Dromai that Lexi can play. And you're right, it has fallen out of favor. Craig only with two Ice Quakes in the list, but finds it very early on. And this is going to change the texture of a turn a lot. When uh, I was working with some folks and, and watching their Nationals prep, or excuse me, their last Pro Tour prep, a lot of focus was on how Lexi was going to go ahead and get advantaged in the Dromai matchup. And frankly, nothing does it better than Ice Quake. It is so, so good at messing up their turns. Uh, I, I saw lists at that Pro Tour that were upwards of six Ice Quakes, and they did their job extremely effectively in this matchup, going as far as to swing the matchup in your favor. So finding this Ice Quake early on, I think, is a very big deal. The first block, though, was done successfully by Fino on the back of that wave of reality critically. And that means the spectral shield for the next go around. And Fino has to make a decision here. Do you actually commit these two cards in hand to try and cover this up? Because you're not getting much of a turn anyway should this arrow hit. Yeah, absolutely. So that wave of reality critically covering the breakpoint of seven, only having to use the two cards to prevent the damage, but also prevent the frostbite. But we're just going to donate two cards to the sedation shot, keep ourselves a spectral shield to shore up another breakpoint in the future. We still have the Ash Craig now only working off a five card hand instead of a six. Fino wants to say, how much pressure can you put at me uh, with only a five card hand versus a six? Yeah, and I think you saw exactly why, why you have to prioritize. Uh, I, like defending Ice Quake, it, Fino is left with no options. You either mm -hmm. commit a bunch of defensive tools or you have no turn. There's, there's yeah. no middle ground there. And it did a really nice job just buying Craig some time. Start finding those power cards. That's what it's about for Lexi, right? You start turning up these power cards, you're going to be able to do some really impressive stuff. And Craig finds another Ice Quake. So two Ice Quakes in the deck finds them both in the early turns. And that could be a really big deal in terms of getting purchase and getting his feet under him, drawing into those power cards. Fino is going to fire off this sigil in response. Yeah, so we've got the Frostbite coming from the Lexi activation. Before that Frostbite hits the field, we're going to grab the sigil of Solace from the Arsenal. Fino Black going up to 43, making Craig work a little harder to find the victory here, but that is the second two of two Ice Quake in this list. This is the time that we're going to be able to put some pressure on and get the Frostbites there. Uh, if we get that Ice Quake out on the field, the question for Fino, again, how much do you want to commit your hands to block? You don't have any dragons uh, on the field yet, so you want to just protect your life total if you're not protecting a board of dragons. Yeah, I expect to see a lot of blocking from Fino on this turn. It should be uh, as much as he possibly can, and I think that's what Craig is trying to figure out. How do I make things awkward for Fino? How do I get the most out of this hand? And I do believe I see an Endless Arrow, so if Craig can find some way to get double value out of the Endless Arrow, it'll do quite a lot to amplify his turn. Now, critically, without the Bullseye Bracers, because that Ice Quake was in the arsenal, it's going to represent three power, so kind of like an additional arrow's worth of power, but only two arrows can be loaded on the turn without something like a Bolton Shot here. So this is going to be... How about a Bolton Shot? How about a Bolton Shot? Why not? This is going to be, looks like a red one, so we're going to give it the plus one from Voltaire, plus three from the Ice Quake. It's going to come in four, eight, representing a nice frostbite number. on hit. Yeah, nice. Uh, a, a nice number for Craig. That's going to be challenging for Fino to deal with. It is, uh, you know, and not even good to have a D-React here because you do have that frostbite now. So a really, really nice start to the turn for Craig. And this is what seems like a really good way to potentially get some value out of that Endless Arrow. And to me, that's how this turn could really unlock if Craig is able to go ahead and pop that a couple times, load it into the arsenal for a future turn. Uh, could be quite a turning point early on in this matchup as far as Craig just doing what he needs to do to keep this Dromai off balance. This is when a Bolton shot is at its most threatening, when Voltaire has only been loaded once, so all of a sudden that reload, nice and relevant. So and look, yep. look, Sam, a fate foreseen in Fino's hand. This, yeah. this 
particular Frostbite going to be critical in disrupting what Fino is able to do defensively? Fino Black sitting at 43 early. Looks like we're going to add that Spectral Shield to the block. Go ahead and put another card in front of it. It might just be the Uvia here, unless we want to pitch a red in order to get an Ash and play that Fate for Scene. So right now, only representing the four block, utilizing that Spectral Shield. We're going to hover the hand over the Uvia. Make sure we want to commit. Let's see if Fino goes to the reaction step and wants to take any actions here. We're going to pass. Looks as though four damage might be coming across. A second Frostbite, so this is going to be representing. Fino's not going to be doing much on this turn beyond blocking. If, if Craig has a, another resource card in hand, this could be quite an impressive turn from him. We are going to pass on the reload here critically because there is no way to give go again off that reload save for that Snapdragon Scalers, and that's often a way you want to get out of jail free later in the game. Or if you have a second Bolton Shot, that also threatens the reload yep, effect and makes also a threatens sense. a breakpoint. A lot of sense from Craig, and, and you know, he's kind of saying, well, you didn't devote a lot of cards the first time. And I think what we may see here is maybe some equipment thrown into the mix. Like, Fino does have to fear this Bolton shot to some extent. He knows the possibilities. He knows that could be an Endless Arrow in hand. That amps up this turn just a little bit. I, I kind of expect to see some action here from Fino in terms of covering this up. Yeah, would have to. You, what is the worst case scenario here if you are Fino Black? Are you worried about a Codex of Frailty? Are you worried about something like that Endless Arrow? Both of those cards, you know, kind of draw you a card. If the if the Endless Arrow goes back to hand, it's like you draw. The Codex of Frailty would make you a Ponder token. The Frailty not going to be relevant there for Fino, but would have to lose a card to the Codex's effect. So really have to consider this Bolton shot heavily if you are Fino on Droma here. This has been a little bit of just some back and forth to start the game. Fino not able to really develop much in the way of Dragons, having to play a lot of defense. Two cards going in front from Fino, and I, I do think that was the correct decision. I, Craig masked his hand really well, did a nice job being a little deceptive, uh, but Fino, I think, correctly sniffed it out here and correctly blocked two cards in front of that Bolton shot. He could have used the equipment as well. Fino prioritizing that for another break point, though, and I, that is a completely fine decision. Both players here taking a bit of a setup. Craig, like you said, doing a bit of posturing, but setting up that Endless Arrow, one of the most critical cards in the matchup, and then Fino blocking with his whole hand, but also getting to set that fate for scene in the arsenal, which is exactly where you want a defense reaction. Absolutely. Chilling in your arsenal so you can play it out and get that four life, cover up a break point while keeping cards still in your hand. Yeah, and if you're Fino... You have to feel pretty good about fading these two Ice Quakes. Like I said, I think it's one of the most important cards in this matchup. And having now burned through them, uh, Craig's ability to disrupt you starts to go down quite a bit. You're not as afraid. It, there are those Winter's Bites still available. Those will potentially make some Frost Bites on turns, potentially take cards from hand. But those Ice Quakes were really the way that Fino is left without choice. You, you cannot effectively play through an Ice Quake as a Dromai. Uh, you, you can sort of account from some of the other disruption that Craig may have, though. So going to start the turn here with an Infecting Shot. Infecting Shot, one of just the most raw, powerful arrows attacks we've ever seen in this game. This is coming in for five, but threatens that Blood Rot token on hit. Going to do two more damage if we let it hit. So that's going to buy immediate equipment block from Fino, really having to be on the defensive early and utilizing some resources that he might need later in this game. Yeah, and this is why Fino prioritized saving that equipment. Is you just want to do a three and two versus the many, many five power arrows you're going to face from Lexi. It is incredibly important to get as much efficiency as you can out of your hand. So from watching their round 14 yesterday, it wasn't uh, that game yesterday uh, in the Swiss. Craig was really on the offensive, much like this game, but was really utilizing those three of a kinds, those rain razors. And Fino was entirely utilizing every resource to block until Craig had a bit of an off turn. And that might be what Fino is shoring up for here. Really just going to commit as many resources as he needs to to keep his life total high for when Craig maybe doesn't have a three arrow turn. Maybe it's only two arrows or the three of a kind doesn't draw you into uh, many, many reds. And that's when Fino is going to be able to pivot, apply some pl pressure or create some dragons. Right now, though, this heat seeker and other critical on hit effect could potentially create a six card hand if that endless arrow is blocked afterwards another problem that this lexi deck is going to present yeah another five so <laughs> is this a card you want to go ahead and put two threes in front of do you want to use the crown of providence now there, there's no real good block with that defense reaction in arsenal having not broken the chain so uh, it's a complicated on hit for fino to answer I, again i think having to make an immediate decision and if you're craig and you've gone ahead and gotten through some of this equipment suite without using three of a kinds, without using Codex of Frailties, without using Rain Razors, you have to feel pretty good about what you have done thus far in this game. However, Fino can turn these games on a <laughs> dime. It only takes one hand, a couple dragons, for things to start snowballing out of control very, very quickly. We saw Fino do it time and time again yesterday in the feature match area. You give him an inch, he will take a mile every time. 
talk about one card that can swing the matchup. There's a Command and Conquer. That's a way that you can apply pressure to the Arsenal. Gonna have to go to the block here. We're gonna use a Sink Below from hand to cover up the Endless Arrow. So Fino's saying, I'm gonna keep you on a five-card hand as opposed to a six-card hand as much as possible. Maybe I can eventually parlay that into a four-card hand. And then from there, we might be able to get a little bit of breathing room to establish those permanents that once Craig has to respect some dragons, that's damage that's not going at Fino's face. Yep. And perhaps he's gonna have, have a little more breathing room from there. You know, you're thinking two turns ahead when you're in the top eight of the national championships. That is, in fact, what he's looking for. And Craig has drawn back up here, drawn into his first three of a kind. And that might even be a Rain Rangers to go along with it. Going to tick up the Tunic 2-1. Going to go ahead. Let's start the turn. We're going to look at that card in the arsenal, make sure we remember what it is. And I do believe that is the Rain Razors to go along with it. So we're looking for, for, for some fireworks, folks. Yeah, right off the bat. This is where it's going to be. Put that Rain Razors out there. And it's time for three of a kind. And Craig is saying, this is a turn where I can do some real damage to Fino's life total, potentially. Going to go ahead, draw three more. Let's see if he gets what he needs to put a nice turn together. Does find a Codex, I think, a, mm -hmm. a Heat Seeker, and an Endless Arrow. So two really big hits there. Codex to potentially be a pitch card and go ahead and fuel this turn. Set up for the future as well as we go around to that pitch deck because we do expect this matchup to go long. So a nice three of a kind from Craig. Let's see how he wants to weave this turn together. Can he go ahead and finally start chipping away at Fino's life total? And because Fino two turns ago took the opportunity, he just took those Frostbites because he wanted to set that fate for scene in the arsenal for exactly a turn like this. Yep. When you're going to see a Rain Razors go at least three cards wide, get you six points of damage value over the course of the turn, but you've saved four points of defensive value in your arsenal for exactly these types of spike turns. So both of these players know the decks, know the matchups, know their opponents, and are setting themselves quite nicely up for the game moving forward. Very curious what that arsenal card is from Craig. Yeah. I think that's going to have a <laughs> lot of influence over how this turn goes. Craig just going to piece this one together. Look, man, stakes are high. You have to figure out this turn. You have to play perfectly against Fino Black if you're going to go ahead and find success. I do see a Bolton shot in Craig's hand, too, and it, that's another critical piece of potentially getting really wide here. On a Rain Razor's Three of a Kind turn, that is probably the card you have to respect the most. And when you have another one... Another Bolton shot in Arsenal. Perfect, perfect Arsenal for Craig on this turn. This is massive. You get to lead with your Arsenal card here. It's going to have the natural go again off of the Rain Razor's and, of course, threaten the reload effect, which you just simply cannot allow if you're Fino here on a Rain Razor's Three Oak turn. It is just not an option. So this is an immediate error you have to respect, but it doesn't have the on-hit like an Infecting Shot does. It doesn't have the on-hit like a uh, Heat Seeker or an Endless Arrow, but this still means you got to make sure and we can't let this turn go too wide unless Fino might be representing just the three block here saying, show me what else you got. Well, look, if it's if it's not a Bolton shot in Craig's hand, you can get away with this. Mm -hmm. But if it is a Bolton shot, then things start to snowball out of control on this hand. So I understand where there is a good strategic line to go ahead and just put three in front of us, let the Bolton shot trigger. A lot of times Lexi's pass on the Bolton shot trigger. It's not actually how you want to set up your turn. In this instance, though, it could be quite devastating should this card not be covered up all the way. And it's a tough break point for Fino. He's got four covered pretty cleanly with the Arsenal uh, D-React. He has four covered uh, as well with the Flamescale Furnace and a three block from hand. But giving up that crown at this juncture means there's a lot of fives that can go ahead and do damage to you throughout the course of this game. And so I understand the temptation to maybe get away with a one-card block, and that was what Fino was debating, but does correctly, I believe, suss out that it is time to put this Crown of Providence in front of this Bolton shot. Yeah, if you let the Bolton shot hit here, the card can be reloaded and go face down, and because Lexi hasn't activated yet, you can flip with Lexi, have access to your second Arsenal a zone, lot and of danger. suddenly you're going four arrows wide on a Rain Razor's turn, and that is just... That just cannot stand if you want to have enough life total to win this game. So the Crown of Providence, just a critical piece of armor here. But being committed early, Fino sitting at a comfortable 39, but utilizing many defensive resources to do so. Wave of Reality, gone. Flamescale Furnace on one defense counter. Crown of Providence at the end of this turn, hitting the graveyard. Also, sometimes you want to go ahead and count up defense as virtual life. And you could say, well, I have five mm -hmm. points of defense mm -hmm. in my equipment, so I have plus five life. Against Lexi, though, it, it doesn't only represent plus five life. It represents stopping critical on hits. And those on hits, when they do connect, can represent way more than, say, five life. The difference between taking an on hit and not taking an on hit can just be 
massive in terms of Lexi's output. That's why a card like Bullseye Bracers was so, so effective. It's just one on hit you have to get a lot of times. And then all of a sudden your turn goes from average flesh and blood turn to some of the best flesh and blood turns we have ever seen in the history of the game. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, this is going to be a heat sick. You're coming in with seven power with go again. This is a very inviting arrow for Fino to want to block. This sets Craig up so nicely on his further turns from here. Another six card hand almost surely on the horizon if this hits. But we know Craig has that other Bolton shot in the hand. So if Fino elects to block this out, it would take one card plus his uh, defense reaction in the arsenal there, and then you also have to work through the Bolton shot, or else the Bolton shot puts the Endless Arrow in, and then that's where things get really nutty. And Fino knows that, and, and that is why Flesh and Blood played at the highest level is such a beautiful game, as you see players consult with one another's graveyard, trying to understand what the possibilities are, and that's what Fino is saying, is he knows that Craig knows that this Heat Seeker is an extremely threatening card, but why did you play it now? Why is this the arrow that you're putting forth at this point in turn? Why is it not at the end of the chain? Are you trying to disguise something else? Are you trying to disguise something like an endless arrow? The mind games are constant in flesh and blood, and it's going to put Fino to the test one more time. Is going to go ahead and finally commit that defense reaction. Very patient play. Finds a clean block on this heat seeker for seven. But two Command and Conquers being donated to defense here, that is, that is the single card that got Fino back into the game in round 14 of Swiss yesterday. It was a Command and Conquer to turn the tempo there. So both being used for defense here, there's one more left in the deck, but you have to imagine Fino would much rather be deploying those on offense. Here's the really interesting point now, Sam. Fino, two cards in hand. If you know those are three blocks, or if you want to guess those are three blocks, and it is a red Bolton shot in hand with that Rain Razors floating out there, you can push that Bolton shot to seven, guaranteeing a reload off of it, unless Fino wants to give that final piece of equipment in Flamescale Furnace. And I think Craig really has to consider taking that opportunity. I don't know the color of the Bolton shot, so that will certainly uh, dictate how this turn is played, but we do know there is a Codex in hand as well. Can't be played can be pitched. Do you want to save it for a future turn, though? I think that's what Craig really has to consider carefully here. I mean, if the Bolton shot hits, it can be played. You got to get the Bolton okay. shot. You got yeah, to get. Fair enough. You got to. But you got to get the Bolton shot into the arsenal, which means you'd have to pitch the rain rate or the endless arrow, which means you have to be really confident it's going to hit because that endless arrow a premium piece as well. Maybe so. that's what Craig is debating here, and and then you can think about something like Cracker Jacks to try and get to eight <laughs> as opposed to seven, and really say unless you have a D react, I am getting away with this one. So a lot of permutations of this turn to unpack, an extremely complex turn over on Craig's side. How do you get the most? out of your hand, and you have to get the most against Fino. Fino is just treading water right now, waiting for that chance to turn, and he will turn the game on you 100%. I think you put it very nicely. This is a beautiful game, especially played at the highest level. You look at a deck like Lexi, you know, kind of unquestionably the strongest raw power deck in the format, but to play it at the highest level, but to get to the top eight of the national championships of the United States, the biggest national championships of all time, you have to look at turns like this and find the exact optimal sequencing of when do I play my arrows, which on hits do I threaten when to make this as challenging as possible so my opponent maybe makes one stumble in the blocks and then all of a sudden I'm off to the races. So Craig Kremples, this is a big moment. Which card does he pitch? Which card does he play? What color is that Bolton shot? We're all on the edge of our seats. We're going to pitch the Endless Arrow and go ahead and come in with that Bolton shot and it is a red one, which means this is going to be coming in at that break point. Yeah. So at least offering seven, I want to see if Craig wants to reach for that Cracker Jacks here. It, yep, 100%. He's going to push it to eight, and <laughs> that makes a lot of sense to me. You want to try and go ahead and guarantee this Bolton shot hit, maybe get that codex set up. Very, very threatening. Now, do we have any resources? I believe we don't, so would have to find a zero. I, I believe as far as zeros go, there's the Bolton shot, but Fino has the sink below critically in this spot. Going to go ahead and commit it. That's going to be four but life. It's just the sink below being committed, and that means the Bolton shot is going to go ahead and hit. Codex of Frailty is going to be fired here, and that is going to go ahead and maybe find an endless arrow. And that also now has the effect of a closed out arsenal against Fino, taking that last card from hand, basically guaranteeing this damage is going to be pushed here. And Fino recognizes that and wants to go ahead and pitch a Tomaltai through that flamescale furnace. Oh, I have been waiting to talk about Tomaltai for the last two turns as the single card that can turn this game, turn this matchup on its head on the turn that Fino wants to hold on to it because when you blow up the New Horizons, you can kind of steal the game on the spot. On the turn that he wants to hold on to it, he has to 
face down a Rain Razor's three of a kind turn. Gonna go ahead and pitch the Tomaltai to the Flamescale Furnace because he has played a red card in the defense reaction Correct. of that sink below. So he can activate the Flamescale Furnace here, make another Ash, and then grab that Command and Conquer. Talk about the card that can put the game on the turn the game on its head. He's gonna put that into the arsenal off the Codex of Frailty. Say, I'm staring down a bunch of damage, but you have a Command and Conquer you're gonna have to deal with at some point in the future. Sam, there are so many layers to this turn. I actually <laughs> think you could go back. You could talk about this turn for hours. You really could. You could go back and just debate it and analyze every decision these players made along the way. It's so, so interesting to me. I, I think both players made very, very complicated decisions along the path of this turn. So, Craig, not without, you know, some major choices as well. That Cracker Jacks, like we talked about, um, uh, an important way to shore up a Bolton shot in the arsenal that wouldn't otherwise have the go again. But because we committed it there, we did get the damage through regardless of that Cracker Jacks. But that Codex play, not only did it push that six damage getting Fino all the way down to 29, we set ourselves up with the Ponder. We're coming in with another five card hand as well. That was just the probably, you know, among the single most high ceilings of that turn that Craig could have found. What a fascinating sequence by both players, defensively and offensively. Now, if you want to look at the bright side, if you're a Fino Black fan, you, you took a really big turn from Craig. You took a piece of equipment. You're at 29. That's not the end of the world. You're not vulnerable yet. You're not starting to hear footsteps. But there's still a lot of power cards in the deck, man. There's two three of a kinds. There's two codexes. There's uh, two rain raisers. You've only gotten through kind of the first salvo if you're Fino, and you've used a vast majority of your equipment to do so. So I think thus far, Craig has to be very happy with how this game has gone. No dragons really able to stick around for Fino. He hasn't had the chance to play any. Simply committing as many cards as possible to the defensive, and it's going to take a moment that Fino wants to play with his life total, as we're seeing here. Searing Shot coming in for four. Going to take the additional one point of damage from the on-hit going down to 24, because Fino's saying this is just damage, and at some yep. point, I gotta take a couple licks to establish some dragons. He does. He needs to get set up, and he's also got that Command and Conquer in Arsenal as well, so there is a very, very powerful turn that Fino can also offer. You know, we talk so much about Lexi's spike turns. Troma has some spike turns too, man. You start getting go against on multiple dragons. You play a big attack from your arsenal. There's there's all kinds of output Troma can find. And I don't want to sleep on her potential to just start pressuring Craig Absolutely. out of nowhere. Absolutely. And I also want to critically point out that Fino, by committing that Tomaltai to the pitch, ne yes, a second Ash is very important, but let's look at that life total throughout this game because that could have been three life committed to the block there. If that three life comes back to matter, that Tomaltai, an important piece in the deck, but we'll have to see if that three life could have been critical. This is going to be that Winter's Bite you were talking about earlier it's going to be coming in from the hand here so this is not going to create a frostbite but it is going to demand another card from fino saying i need you to give me a pitch or give me a card in your discard yeah bright side for finos you are going to go ahead and, and get some ash if you pitch into this so that's not the end of the world i do see a sigil in hand for fino so it looks like that's going to be pitched here fino maybe with some belief that he can work back around to that card and it is codex one more time from craig gonna go ahead load up give a give a frailty <laughs> give a ponder and find the best zero option. It is just going to be a Falcon Wing in this instance, looking to get a little wide, still preserving that Endless Arrow at the end of the chain, knows there's going to be a Ponder, could even pass that Endless Arrow into the next turn and just take a six-card hand into the next go-around. We'll have to defend carefully against that Command and Conquer he knows is there. Yeah, absolutely. Fino, uh, Craig here, by committing the Codex of Frailty on a turn that Fino does already have an arsenal, really just valuing getting another card, going a little wider, pushing as much damage as he can while he's on the front foot. Because like you said, he knows that Command and Conquer is there. If he has that six-card hand that he's setting himself up for, he's going to have to defend it against a Command and Conquer. 2x Codex, Codex is down, and I think it's important we track these power cards yeah. throughout the course of this game. For sure. We have gone through two Codexes, a three of a kind, and a Rain Razors at this point. So, starting to make headway in terms of stopping Craig from having his highest output potential turns, is going to go ahead and fire off this Endless Arrow on this turn, ask Fino for that last piece of equipment, burn them all, also going to make a clean block here, sends the Endless Arrow to the bin, Craig gets the arsenal off the ponder, Still going to have a very big turn on the next go-around. Wow, massive choice from Fino there to commit the Flamescale Furnace to the block, basically saying, listen, we're going to see, he's got... Two dragons left in hand. One of them's an Azvali, one of them's a mirror guy. He could just pitch two into that command and conquer because Craig only is going to have that one arsenal card to work with as well as the cards that he drew uh, draws up. If he decides to block with two cards, that's only a three-card hand unless one of those cards is that critical three of a kind. That might be the kind of off turn that Fino's been looking for. I think Craig is debating arsenaling right now, which is a really interesting spot to be in. 
maybe thinking about the quality of that card that he has drawn. If it's something like one of those power cards, do you just want to keep it in hand and say, okay, if you want to command and conquer me on this turn, I know what I'm going to do on my next turn. And there's layers to this game, Sam. There's layer after layer. Craig using all the knowledge available to him, considering mm -hmm. the possibilities. Now, if he does not commit this card, there is a high possibility chance that Fino just goes ahead and deploys a dragon mm -hmm. instead. So there is some risk here. Or maybe Craig just... You know, running a little semi-bluff there. Craig, big poker player back in the day. He knows all about the semi-bluff. Maybe wants to try and bait Fino into going ahead and using that command and conquer. But for Fino, the choice is clear. It is going to be Muragai coming down, representing only the second dragon we've seen this entire game. Absolutely. Two damage coming across, but that's not what Fino's worried about. He's not yet really thinking about Craig Kremples' life total. He's not worried about getting this Lexi down to zero. He's really saying, here's a dragon. Do you want to deal with it? Because that's four damage you have to send at my permanent and not at my life total. Miragai, a pretty critical dragon here, going to take Phantasm off the first dragon attack each turn. So Fino, as we said, took five damage at the very minimum to play this Asvali, or to play this Miragai pitching the Asvali, as well as the three off the Falcon Wing. So this is a big decision for him, taking all that damage to deploy the dragon. Yeah, and Craig just going to go ahead and eat it here. And uh, this is a good opportunity to talk about poppers, because obviously there hasn't been a lot of vulnerability to poppers thus far, but something like Miragai tries to shore that up. Craig's not big on poppers, though. Only two Command and Conquerors in the deck, and that has shifted so dramatically from when Dromai was such a huge threat going into, say, the last Pro Tour, where we saw things like Down and Dirty in decks, uh, you know, max Command and Conquerors all over the place. I, I, I have mentioned many times, I think Craig's priority shifted a little bit away from this Dromai matchup. Yeah, I think we might be on the hook for another three-of-a-kind Rain Razor's turn. If, I, if that is a second Rain Razor's in hand, I don't want to call the shot too early, but... Greg definitely has that three of a kind. I, I might have spoken it into existence in that moment right before this turn. Going to see if he wants to take down the mirror guy. As we said, once you have access to more cards in a game that you're used to only drawing four, the, comp the complications and the questions grow exponentially. Yeah, and I also wonder, too, if Craig already considers if he's at the point where he can just say, I don't actually care about Mirror Guy. That doesn't make your hands any better. It's just raw damage. Maybe I can just start putting you under life total pressure with the quality of this hand. So I, it's going to be really interesting to see how Craig chooses to proceed on this turn. Mirror Guy doesn't matter if Fino isn't ever able to keep any cards. We've got a premeditate. We've got oh a rain boy. razors. We've oh got a boy. three of a kind off of your find all spring tunic counter. We're getting plus five on our first arrow this turn, plus two on every arrow from here. And we get a oh, full and art of Rip. War on the rip and so, so okay so Art of War unless that makes it to the arsenal not going to matter on this turn but Craig is going really hard in the paint here a lot of options available and is going to go ahead and also reveal a command and conquer ready to go so if Craig has the resources here which at the bare minimum he can pitch Art of War we know he's got at least a two pitch in hand I we're going to see some fireworks on this turn. There's no two ways around it. Wow, and fascinatingly, if he elects to play that Command and Conquer here, it's going to get the Premeditate buff because Premeditate cares about a card in Arsenal. Correct. It doesn't care about an arrow. That's, that's a big <laughs> Command and Conquer. It's a Command and Conquer for nine. But let's see. He's just going to first go ahead and load up with Voltaire. We've got a blue to pitch for it, so that means we're coming in with a big old Sedation shot for ten. With go again? <laughs> not not bad. Not bad. And oh <laughs> Craig is off to the races here, just firing at Fino's life total. And it's really interesting, too. Command and Conquer, you know, it does a lot. It's a powerful, powerful flesh and blood card. And we often hone in on the ability to disrupt Arsenal. Can't forget about that first clause, though. Defense reactions unable to be played. And that could put Fino in a really hard spot as well, where just the defense values do not line up. It has to put a lot of cards in front of this. And now this turn, with Fino having no access to equipment, these are impossible breakpoints to cover up. You just can't do it. It's so, so hard. And I, man, this feels like a near perfect start from Craig Kremples to this game. Fino already under immense pressure from this turn. Fino Black sitting at 21 life total points. This is the first match of the top eight here in the national championships 2023, the biggest national championships ever, facing down a sedation shot for 10 with go again. It's only the first arrow of the turn, folks. We're going even wider after this. Craig Kremples, your fifth seed, a veteran of the TCG scene, sitting at 34. He says, here's my first attack for 10, and you don't even know what's coming after this. Not only does this come in for 10, it threatens that command and Conquer in the arsenal with the inertia token. Sam, Craig last won a national championship 19 years ago. This guy has been in the trenches for a very long time. One of the most fearsome TCG competitors of all time, now trying to find his way through to the semifinals with a massive 
Rain Razor's three of a kind turn does get the hit from that sedation shot. And the train is rolling here. This turn is only going to get more and more explosive. It is going to be drill shot as the fire up. That's, that's going to be for six, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah, six heading the way of Fino. And then we do know there is six more coming on the tail end of this should Craig want to with that Command and Conquer. And it's a di disruptive six, too. And it's kind of redundant disruption when you have that inertia floating around. But still, I, I think you're just doing so much damage that that's a huge part of the equation at this point. This is six with go again. It would threaten a minus one defense counter on the equipment, but that's all been purchased by Craig. That's been donated to the blocking cost here. So this is just six damage. And like we've been talking about, that Command and Conquer can just threaten so much of Fino's total life at this point. Fino has just been desperately trying to cling to any semblance of a turn for himself, but the offensive output from Craig here has been unbelievably potent. And the resources just lining up perfectly for Craig here, able to do absolutely everything he wanted to do on this turn, is also going to have this ponder token leading into the next turn. So Craig apt to play a five card hand on the next turn too. No respite coming for Fino Black. And it, it does feel like Craig has just shifted to say, I am going to kill you. Yeah. I, I am done with this dragon nonsense. Go ahead and make your little flying snakes. I'm not interested. Your life total is now what's at danger. Talking about the tournament at large, looking ahead, Dromai, the only illusionist in this field of Aria heroes. Fino Black, he talked about this as a day two deck into the winner's meta. This is a cavalcade of the winner's meta here in the top eight. This is the one single illusionist that is capable of moving through this tournament and potentially taking down the winner's meta like Fino wants to, but in order to do so, he has to take step one, take down the best deck in the format, and we're seeing exactly why it's considered considered so here. Now this Command and Conquer coming in for six. A lot of things have to go right here for Fino if he wants to play that Command and Conquer. He's got to have a blue and two three blocks. Yeah, and I, I think I saw Craig point towards Fino, just going to go his way, either demand the arsenal, demand the two cards, and you have to love the way Craig is playing this game, just getting aggressive. Fino down to eight now. That is a precarious life total against Alexi. Fino is forced to commit two cards to the defense here. Craig going to get that Ponder token, load up again. I think that may have possibly, no, I, I thought it was an Ardivore. There's only one Ardivore in Craig's deck. It so. might have, yeah, infecting shot or sedation or uh, searing shot was what I could see, but it doesn't matter yet because it might be heading to the graveyard. We did have the blue there for Fino, so again, clinging to a way to pivot this game. This was the key in Swiss yesterday, but the life totals weren't looking like this in that game. This is eight from Fino to 34 for Craig, threatening that one card in the arsenal here. We do see the Command and Conquer in Craig's hand as well, so no popper going to be necessary to take down this Command and Conquer. Craig's got a decision to make. Yeah, I, I think this was a really strong two-card hand from Fino. This is about as good as you could hope for coming back. You, he had the blue, which are at a premium in his deck. He had the disruption in Command and Conquer. Again, disruption at a premium in his deck. So I, I think... If you want to look at the bright side, this is as good as the response could go from Fino. And now Craig is going to have a think, try and consider, is this a moment where I can go ahead and present some defensive options? And it does seem more appealing because once Fino gets to this danger zone of eight, Fino no longer has the luxury to go ahead and say, all right, well, I'll just take off this turn. You can go ahead and throw damage my way and I will set up and I will get that big dragon turn rolling. Fino's going to have to commit defensive cards on probably every turn of the game from now on and does not have equipment to do so. So if Fino never gets to play a four-card hand again, I do think Craig can consider some defensive options here. Absolutely. Craig also with 34 life and only one card in the arsenal, depending on what he has, might have enough to just say, "Let listen, I think I can get you with these four cards. My arsenal might not be necessary, but looking like he is going to put two cards in front of this. Like you say, he can play this patiently. He's going to have to give cards defensively, Fino is, so there is potential to snowball this no matter how much defense is used on the turn. And that card in the arsenal is definitely an arrow of some kind, so does represent a threat for Craig to play on his turn. That Command and Conquer not going to be relevant because the Dragon's not going to be swinging. Wouldn't have Phantasm anyway, so a lot of decisions here for Craig. What do you want to do facing down the Command and Conquer? And for Fino at 8 life, is he ever going to find another chance to deploy another permanent? I, I just don't think he ever gets to play a four-card hand again. Yeah. Like, if the baseline is all Craig has to do is represent eight damage turn to turn, Craig will succeed at that goal. It's not hard for Lexi to find eight damage. And without being able to play a larger hand, well, how do you get wide? How do you produce enough dragons to actually give Craig trouble? And I think Craig firmly in the driver's seat at this moment. Absolutely. I mean, there's just not a lot of, like 
potential ways to brick for Alexi. You have to really draw like... It has to be pure brick. Like three like winner's bites. Yeah, yep. I mean, because Codex is such a good way to filter the hand here. Speaking of Codex, if Craig has one in the hand here, which I think I might have seen, Fino off an arsenal, that's going to take a card from the graveyard to Fino's arsenal, get rid of a defending card. We're going to go ahead and load up a Falcon Wing, take down the mirror guy. We're playing patiently. Very and it looks patiently. like, yeah, we're going to yeah, give Fino the, the turn. Talk about a four-card hand. He's got it. He's, he's got it he's here. He's got it, but also... This may be the last one for him because he's now facing a five-card hand on the clapback, and he has to do something very, very meaningful on this turn. And I'm looking at the hand; I don't really see it. Like, yeah, you can do this. This is this is all fine, fine and good. It, it, you're starting to get some presence, but you didn't turn the game off off this first dragon, this Chromai, and. Craig isn't really playing the popper game, isn't trying to slow Fino down, and now he gets to come back with a five-card hand, a nice arrow loaded up. You're expecting to see at least three arrows. Let's not lose sight of the fact, too, Craig still has his Snapdragon Scalers, mm -hmm. which I think is so critical to just having that massive turn. And if you're Craig, you can kind of just wait until you see that next power card, until you see that three-of-a-kind come back around, and, and then you're ready to go and try and close this game. So I, I don't think this was exactly what Fino wanted on this turn. It, it's kind of just... A little bit of damage and if Craig wants to he can ignore a lot of this absolutely this is a blue dust up here so only going to be coming in for two yes the on hit is rather relevant you get to create an ash turn it into ashwing if you so desire but can just be a one card block here for Craig with that infecting shot in the arsenal you're still going to have a highly potent offensive turn here so Craig able to commit even a two block here if he wishes we did see the chromite developed and the burn them all so that was one point of arcane and three points of physical to bring Craig all the way down I say all the way down bring Craig down 230 staring down Fino Black at 8 and it looks like that dust up is going to go yep. ahead and hit and we are going to go ahead and create the Ashwing and because the extra action point from Chromai we're also able to swing with it on the turn and that uh, one damage was already represented which is why Fino uh, Craig went from 30 to 27 Craig said I'll take it all I'll take it with the action point you can swing at me with the Ashwing that's all good I'm coming at you with everything I got Craig with a lot of luxury and how he played that turn you did see him debating maybe covering up that on hit but just saying uh, I, I just get enough out of my hand I don't have to do this I can go ahead and actually just play this turn aggressively and a nice aggressive start here to go ahead and fire off a searing shot with go again representing Four slash five, as Searing Shot always does. Was Fino able to find one of his defense reactions? We've seen a number of them used, only two Fate for Scenes in the list, and three Sink Belows, two Sand Covers, but I'm not sure if he brought them in in this matchup. Definitely to bring in the Oasis Respites. Without a Tunic, that card can be pretty inefficient against Alexi. Seen a number of Dragons there, and yeah, at least double, one Yeah, double block. Kyloria and a Passing Mirage as a blocking card, so not a huge amount of block value on this turn if he can get through with some resources maybe can set up that kyloria but we're already seeing two cards possibly being committed here and this this is the problem with not having any equipment left these awkward awkward breakpoints just start demanding so many cards from fino and at some point the math does not work out when three of a kind gets in the mix you just don't have enough cards to actually cover everything up winner's bite gonna go ahead and claim one more card from fino here Closes the combat chain, going to pitch into this with that last Kyloria, and I think that means Craig is going to have the all clear here to go ahead and load up one more time with a Bolton shot. Five with some go again is going to be blocked. Two points headed Fino's way. One resource floating. A lot of damage being represented here. This looks like this could be just enough to take care of the whole game here, folks. And that gets the fist bump, and Craig Kremples has now moved on to the semifinals, and I, I have